Good morning, welcome to Wednesday on BBC One. Now at six o'clock, let's begin with breakfast. Hello, this is Breakfast with Bill Turnbull and Nagat Manchetti. Up to a quarter of a million vulnerable people are being denied their right to support when interviewed by police. A report for the Home Secretary has found that people with learning difficulties and mental health problems are not being offered the help of an appropriate adult while in police custody. Our main news this morning, a charity is warning that nearly a quarter of a million vulnerable adults, including those with learning difficulties, are at risk of a miscarriage of justice when being questioned by police. The Code of Practice says that these individuals should be offered the support of what's known as an appropriate adult. But a report for the Home Secretary has found that this only happens in about one in six cases in England and Wales. As Helen Fawkes reports. Back in 1975, Colin Lattimore, a mentally vulnerable man, walked free after his conviction for manslaughter was quashed. Police had interviewed him and his two teenage friends without a parent or responsible adult present. They made a series of confessions, but later scientific evidence proved they were innocent. This led to a government inquiry into how vulnerable people were treated by the police. These days, officers are required to provide an appropriate adult to safeguard the welfare and rights of these suspects. But there's widespread concern about its provision. The reason that there are not appropriate adult services in, sing in every single area is simply that nobody has been given legal responsibility to provide that service. Appropriate adults for children are available in every single part of the country because it's a legal duty of youth offending teams. Nobody has that responsibility for adults and consequently we end up with a situation that we've got. It's estimated that one in five adults who are detained or questioned by police in England and Wales are mentally vulnerable. That's around 280,000 people a year. Out of these, only 45,000 had access to an appropriate adult. The report criticised police practice, as well as the limited number of available appropriate adults. In response, the National Police Chiefs Council said it would be pleased to work with the Home Office, local authorities and the National Appropriate Adults Network on any plans to improve the current service. The report also calls for a change in the law to make it a legal duty for all mentally vulnerable suspects to be provided with appropriate adults. Helen Fawkes, BBC News. And in a few moments, we're going to be joined by the chief executive of the charity who wrote that report. That's at ten past eight. At the time now is ten minutes past eight. Alex will have the weather for us in a few moments. But first, we're going to talk about when vulnerable people are questioned or detained by police and whether they should be offered what's known as an appropriate adult to make sure that they're fairly treated. Well, according to a report commissioned by the Home Office, this is only happening in about one in six cases. Chris Bath joins us. He's from the National Appropriate Adult Network who carried out that report. Nula Chapman works as a volunteer. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. So Chris, this is you know, quite serious because you have people with uh, mental health issues, learning difficulties, mm. being questioned by police. They need help and many of them not getting it. Yeah, it would seem that way. I mean, we asked the police to provide us data on what they thought they were doing in terms of getting appropriate adults. And it seems like around 45,000 cases a year aren't getting an appropriate adult, which is good. But something like a quarter of a million people are going through the process of being questioned and being detained, held in custody for hours and hours and hours without the support that's supposed to be mandatory. Nulia, you are a volunteer and you volunteer as an appropriate adult. Yes. Um, just explain... What, what that involves. When are you called on? What do you do when you get to a police station? There's actually, it's, it's, on, it's done on a road to basis, so you put down the days, times you want to do. Um, we're contracted to do one shift a week, but the majority of the appropriate adults, volunteer appropriate adults in Manchester do far more than that. Um, once you're called by a referral agency, which is social services, or the police, you attend the station, um, you deal with the welfare of the appropriate adult, of the vulnerable adult, in the sense that you make sure that they've been treated fairly and with respect. How much of what you do veers or strays into the path of what a lawyer would do? Making sure they understand the question or saying to them, you know you don't have to answer this question, there's almost a, is there, are there any lines crossed or is it quite clear what your role is there? No, it is very clear. We're not there to give legal advice. They have a solicitor, they have legal representation for that. Our job is to make sure that they understand the process, why they're there, what's going to happen to them. And we see that process through the interview, 
uh, with the solicitor and the interviewing officers. Um, and Chris, how, how great is the danger that people in this situation might end up admitting to doing something that they hadn't actually done? Because that's mm. where this whole system came from. Originally. Well, exactly. I mean, the, the, the proof is where, where we started from in the first place, which is that somebody uh, went to prison for a, for a while for something that they just didn't do based on a false confession. Of course, the risk is that um, a court case will revolve around a confession or an interview, uh, piece of evidence that actually is not fair. And I suppose it's a bit like putting a, a wheelchair ramp up for somebody who's disabled by, by being in a wheelchair. You know, we just need to not say that, the, that people who are mentally vulnerable shouldn't go through the justice process, just need to make a reasonable adjustment to that process. And what the appropriate adults there to do, as Nina said, is make sure that under, things are understood, their welfare is OK, um, they understand what's happening to them, the questions that are being asked of them, and the significance of what they're saying back in response to that as well. Wh whose fault is it then that only one in six people with mental health problems or learning difficulties are not getting or yeah. having the assistance of an appropriate adult? I think there's two parts to that. One is that we're, police only seem to be uh, identifying around 3% of the adult population coming through custody as, as needing an AA when we think it's more like 20-odd percent. So there's an issue there around identification in the police state. But I have great sympathy for a custody officer faced with the fact that there's no appropriate adult scheme available in their area. You know, if they do identify vulnerability, what do they do? And our report suggests that around half of England and Wales has got appropriate adult schemes that you can just call on. It's organised. Volunteers like Nula are there, ready, ready and waiting. Around half the country's got nothing. And, of course, there's no... Appropriate adults also sent for young people, but in that case, the youth offending teams have got a legal duty to send an appropriate adult. Nobody's got that legal duty. So the question of whose fault it is is quite complicated. Nobody's got that duty. Somebody should have it, and it should probably be arranged at a, a, a local level in some way. At some point along the line, though, when necessary, uh, people will be offered legal advice if, if charges are, are brought, for instance. So is there ever a blurring of lines between the service that you would offer, Nula, and what a solicitor might do? No, there's, there's no confusion at all. Um, the solicitor's there for legal the legal side and we're there for the welfare side. Um, there are occasions when a solicitor isn't called or the detainee doesn't want a solicitor and you can't force someone to have one. Um, in that instance, I would advise them of how important it is um, and go through the caution with them that they can say nothing should they choose to. How much but at the time... end of the day, it's mm. up to them. Apologies for interrupting. How yeah. much time do you spend with them what, uh, in, in the process? Is it only in the police station that you spend time with them? Yes, but that can be anything from an hour to five, six, seven hours, depending on what is happening. Solicitors take time. The whole process takes time. Mm. Um, and unfortunately for vulnerable adults in custody, it's highlighted because they're stuck in a cell for a See, Chris, time. I don't understand. There are so many charities who are saying we haven't got enough people, enough volunteers mm. around there. Is that there are funding gaps in all sorts of um, care institutions. Yep. When you say there are people available like Nuna, there aren't. There yeah. aren't people who have six, seven hours, yeah. you know, or, or who are prepared to give yeah. that because they're yeah. leading busy lives. So. Mm. Where are these people who aren't uh, uh, organising the appropriate adults supposed to get the volunteers from? Well, it's not necessary for an appropriate adult scheme to be based on a voluntary model. It, it can be. It's up to local areas to decide how they want to do it. So some may pay staff, some may use volunteers. The, um, the critical thing is that we actually constantly get requests from people uh, nationally asking, can they, can they volunteer in this role? The really frustrating... How many? Oh, gosh. Um, probably, I mean, I easily get a couple of week nationally and, that, and then locally people will be getting uh, more on top of that. The, the difficulty for me is it's dead easy for me to refer to an area like Manchester where there is an organised scheme that's being coordinated and training's being provided. The difficulty is what happens if you get somebody who wants to do that job in an area where there's no infrastructure, there's no, there's no support, there's no training, there's no staff ready to, to support people and that's, that's the crux of the problem. All right. Chris, thanks very much. Nilo, thanks to you as well. Thank, Thank you. you.